The VIC-2 video interface chip 2, specifically known as the MOS Technology 6567, 8562, 8564 NTSC versions, 6569, 8565, 8566 PAL, is the microchip tasked with generating Y, C video signals combined to composite video in the RF modulator and DRAM refresh signals in the Commodore 64 and C128 home computers. Succeeding MOS's original Victoria used in the VIC-20, the VIC-2 was one of the two chips mainly responsible for the C64's success the other chip being the 6581 SID. <laughs> <laughs> development history The VIC-2 chip was designed primarily by Al Charpentier and Charles Winterbull at MOS Technology, Inc. as a successor to the MOS Technology 6560 Victoria. The team at MOS Technology had previously failed to produce two graphics chips named MOS Technology 6562 for the Commodore toy computer, and MOS Technology 6564 for the Color Pet, due to memory speed constraints. In order to construct the VIC 2, Charpentier and Winterbull made a market survey of current home computers and video games, listing up the current features, and what features they wanted to have in the VIC 2. The idea of adding sprites came from the Texas Instruments TI-99, 4A computer and its TMS-9918 graphics coprocessor. The idea to support collision detection came from the Mattel Intellivision. The Atari 800 was also mined for desired features. About three quarters of the chip surface is used for the sprite functionality. The chip was partly laid out using electronic design automation tools from Applicon, now a part of UGS Corp., and partly laid out manually on vellum paper. The design was partly debugged by fabricating chips containing small subsets of the design, which could then be tested separately. This was easy since MOS Technology had both its research and development lab and semiconductor plant at the same location. The chip was developed in 5 micrometer technology. The work on the VIC-2 was completed in November 1981 while Robert Yans was simultaneously working on the SID chip. Both chips, like the Commodore 64, were finished in time for the Consumer Electronics Show in the first weekend of January 1982. <laughs> VIC-2 features 16 kilobytes address space for screen, character and sprite memory 320 times 200 pixels video resolution 160 times 200 in multi-color mode 40 times 25 characters text resolution 3 character display modes and 2 bitmap modes 16 colors concurrent handling of 8 sprites per scanline each of 24 times 21 pixels 12 times 21 multicolor raster interrupt see details below smooth scrolling independent dynamic ram refresh Bus mastering for a 6502 style system bus, CPU and VIC-2 accessing the bus during alternating half-clock cycles the VIC-2 will halt the CPU when it needs extra cycles. <laughs> Technical details Note that below register addresses are stated as seen by CPU in a C64. To yield the register numbers as usually given in data sheets, i.e., starting with zero, the leading D0 should be omitted. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Programming. The VIC-2 is programmed by manipulating its 47 control registers up from 16 in the Victoria memory mapped to the range $D00$D02E in the C64 address space. Of all these registers, 34 deal exclusively with sprite control sprites being called mobs, from movable object blocks in the VIC-2 documentation. Like its predecessor, the VIC-2 handles light pen input, and with help from the C64's standard character ROM, provided the original PETSCII character set from 1977 on a similarly dimensioned display as the 40-column PET series. By reloading the VIC-II's control registers via machine code hooked into the raster interrupt routine the scanline interrupt, one can program the chip to generate significantly more than eight concurrent sprites a process known as sprite multiplexing, and generally give every program defined slice of the screen different scrolling, resolution and color properties. The hardware limitation of eight sprites per scanline could be increased further by letting the sprites flicker rapidly on and off. 
mastery of the Rasta interrupt was essential in order to unleash the Vikii's capabilities. Many demos and some later games would establish a fixed lock step between the CPU and the VIC-2 so that the Victoria registers could be manipulated at exactly the right moment. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Character graphics. The C64 shipped with the PETASCII character set in a 2K ROM, but, like the VIC-20 before it, the actual data for the characters was read from memory at a specified location. This location was one of the VIC-2 registers, which allowed programmers to construct their own characters sets by placing the appropriate data in memory. Each character was an 8x8 grid, a byte represented 8 bits horizontally, so 8 bytes were required for a single character and thus the complete 256 character set used a total of 2048 bytes. There was no limit to how many such sets could be constructed, although they had to be aligned on a 2K boundary within the 16K video bank. In addition to car sets, the VIC-2 also uses 1000 bytes to store the 25 lines of 40 characters per line, one byte for each character. The remaining 24 bytes of a 1K block was used for sprite pointers. The screen memory defaulted to $400 to 7 times 10 to the $7 being the default on the 64 and 128. Color RAM is accessed as bits 8 to 11 of the video matrix. In the 64 and 128, it is located in I.O. space at $D800 DBFF and cannot be moved from that location. It contains the values for color 1 color 3 in multicolor mode of each character. The character ROM is mapped into two of the VIC-II's four windows at $1,000 to $1 FFF and $9,000 to $9 FFF, although the CPU cannot see it there the character ROM may be switched into $D000 DFFF where it is visible to the CPU, but not the VIC-2. Thus graphics data or video buffers cannot be placed at $1,000 to $1 FFF or $9,000 to $9 FFF because the VIC-2 will see the character ROM there instead. Because these areas of RAM could not be used by the VIC-2 graphics chip, they were frequently used for music, sound effects the SID chip. The C64 has the ability to have RAM and ROM at the same address in memory but the CPU would see one and the VIC-2 chip would see the other. In default high-resolution character mode, the foreground of each character may be set individually in the color RAM. In multicolor character mode, color 3 is limited to the first eight possible color values. The fourth bit is then used as a flag indicating if this character is to be displayed in high-resolution or multicolor, thus making it possible to mix both types on one screen. Colors 1 and 2 are set by the registers at $D022 and $D023 and are global for all characters. If extended background color mode is used, the upper two bits of the character code are used to select one of four background color registers. This allows four different background colors on the screen, but at the expense of only allowing 64 different characters instead of 256. Because this is fairly limiting, games seldom used it. Topic. Bitmap mode Adding an all-points addressable bitmap mode was one of the Commodore design team's primary goals, as the VIC-I lacked such a feature. However, in order to use as little additional circuitry as possible, they organized it in the same manner as character mode, i.e. 8x8 and 4x8 tiles. Bitmap graphics require an 8K page for the pixel data and each byte corresponds to one row of 8 or 4 pixels. The next byte is the row underneath it and after the eighth row, returning to the top of the next tile. In high-res bitmaps, screen RAM is used to hold the foreground and background colors of each tile high and low nibble of each byte. This is the only VIC-2 mode that does not make any use of the color RAM at $D800 or the background color register at $D021. Multicolor bitmap mode allows three colors per tile the fourth is the background color as set in $D021. Colors 1 and 2 are selected by the bits in screen RAM same as high as bitmaps and the third is from color RAM. Despite the high level of color detail and all points addressable capabilities of bitmap mode, it is generally impractical for in-game graphics due to requiring a high amount of system resources 8K for the pixel data plus considerable more CPU cycles to modify each tile and normally cannot be scrolled. Thus, it is normally only seen on loader and sometimes title screens. Dig Dug and Donkey Kong are two of the more notable examples of C64 games which utilize bitmap graphics. Sprites 
VIC-2 sprites are either 24 by 21 monochrome or 12 by 21 multicolor. Similar to character graphics, the latter have one individual color for each sprite and two global ones. VIC-2 has eight sprites, each of which uses 64 bytes of memory to store but, with certain limitations, it can display many more. Sprite multiplexing is a common method of getting more than eight on screen although there still is a maximum of eight per scanline. The VIC-2 scanline counters are polled until the desired point is reached on screen, after which the program quickly changes the sprite coordinates. This programming trick and other workarounds could result to over 20 sprites on screen once. For a demo, though, the limit is considerably more flexible. In theory the maximum number of different sprites visible at the same time is 256 assuming the VIC II's entire 16K page was filled. They are addressed by using a block number to refer to each sprite pattern in memory beginning with 0 and going to 255 depending on their position in the video page. If the second video bank numbered as 01, 2, and 3 is used, block 0 would refer to the sprite stored at $4,000 and block 255 would be at $7 FC0. Each sprite may be double-sized vertically, horizontally or both. This does not make the sprite bigger except visually or add more pixels to the sprite, but merely upscales the existing pixels. Because the horizontal position register for sprites is one byte and limited to a maximum value of 255, it could not cover the entire 320 pixels of the VIII's screen area, so an additional register called the most significant byte flag is provided for this. $D01E and $D01F contain the background and sprite-to-sprite -sprite collision registers. The former is rarely used because it cannot provide information on the specific background object the sprite is touching. $D01B contains the sprite-to-background priority register, which is used to govern whether a sprite moves behind or in front of background objects. When a sprite enters the same space as another sprite, the lower numbered ones will always pass over the higher numbered ones. Topic. Scrolling In order to scroll a character screen, the VIC-2 is set to 38 column and or 24 line mode via the registers at $D011 and $D016. This creates an off-screen buffer where the row of characters to be scrolled is placed. By adjusting the scroll bits in the above-mentioned registers, one row may be moved on screen after which it repeats unless a new row is put in the buffer. Color RAM is scrolled simultaneous with screen RAM and works the same way. VIC-2 scrolling is a relatively complicated, CPU-intensive task, although it was not uncommon for C64 game programmers to cheat by designing graphics so that the color RAM can remain static. Another standard trick is to cover the bottom or top 25% of the screen with a score counter to reduce the amount of scrolling that has to be performed. Finally, it is usually necessary to use an extra 1K piece of RAM to write character data to and then Blit it into the screen RAM to prevent screen tearing, although this cannot be done with color RAM. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Raster interrupts. Utilization of raster interrupts is an essential part of C64 game programming. In the computer's power on default state, the first CIA chip generates an interrupt 60 times per second which sends the CPU to the kernel IRQ handler at $EA31. This acknowledges the CIA interrupt, updates the clock, scans the keyboard, and blinks the cursor in BASIC. Games normally disable this and instead set up the VIC-2 to generate interrupts when a specific scanline is reached, which is necessary for split-screen scrolling and playing music. The game remaps the IRQ vector at $0314, $0315 to its raster handler which performs these functions and then optionally executes a JMP $EA31 instruction to return control to the kernel. Some games use only one IRQ, however, nested ones are more common and improve program stability. In this setup, the IRQ is remapped to the second routine and so forth for each one until the last one restores it to the address of the first IRQ. When nested IRQs are used, only one JMP $EA31 instruction is needed in the chain and the others can be ended with JMP $EA81, which simply goes to the end of the kernel handler. The VIC-2 may also generate a raster interrupt from the collision registers, but this feature is rarely used. <laughs> <laughs> Memory mapping The VIC-2 has a 14-bit address bus and can use any of the four 16K segments of the C64's memory space for video data. 
To manage this, two additional address bits are contributed by port bits of CIA. $00003 FFF is the power on default. The second segment $4, to $7 FFF is typically the best choice for games or when programming from BASIC as it is the only segment that is completely free RAM with no ROMs or I.O. registers mapped into it. The fourth segment FFF is also a good choice provided that machine language is used, as the kernel ROMs must be disabled to gain read access by the CPU. Note that graphics data may be freely stored underneath the basic ROM at $A000 $BFFF, the kernel ROM at $E000 $FFFF or I.O. registers at $D000 $DFFF. Since the VIC-2 only sees RAM, regardless of how the CPU memory mapping is adjusted, character ROM is visible only in the first and third segment, thus if segment 2 or 4 is used, the programmer must supply his own character data. The screen RAM, bitmap page, sprites, and character sets must all occupy the same segment window provided the CIA bits aren't changed via scanline interrupt. Registers The VIC-2 has 47 read, write registers listed below. Topic colors in multicolor character mode 160 times 200 pixels which most games used characters had 4 times 8 pixels the characters were still approximately square since the pixels were double width and 4 colors out of 16 colors the fourth color was the same for the entire screen the background color while the other 3 could be set individually for every such 4 times 8 pixel area two colors were loaded from the active text screen and the third was loaded from color ram Sprites in multicolor mode 12 times 21 pixels had three colors, two shared among all sprites and one individual. The artist had to pick shared colors such that the combination with individual colors led to a colorful impression. Some games reloaded shared colors during the raster interrupt, for example, the game Turrican II's Underwater Area which was vertically distinct had different colors. Others, such as Epix's Summer Games and Compute, S. Gazette's Basketball Sam and Ed, overlaid two high-resolution sprites to allow two foreground colors to be used without sacrificing horizontal resolution one. Of course, this technique reduced the number of available sprites by half. On PAL C64s, the PAL delay line in the monitor or TV which averages the color hue, but not the brightness, of consecutive screen lines can be used to create seven nonstandard colors by alternating screen lines showing two colors of identical brightness. There are seven such pairs of colors in the Victoria chip. The C64's team did not spend much time on mathematically computing the 16-color palette. Robert Yans, who was involved with the development of the Vic-2, said, I'm afraid that not nearly as much effort went into the color selection as you think. Since we had total control over hue, saturation and luminance, we picked colors that we liked. In order to save space on the chip, though, many of the colors were simply the opposite side of the color wheel from ones that we picked. This allowed us to reuse the existing resistor values, rather than having a completely unique set for each color. Note that early versions of the VIC-2 used in PAL C64s has a different color palette than later revisions. The VIC-E The 8,564-8,566 VIC-E in the Commodore 128 used 48 pins rather than 40, as it produced more signals, among them the clock for the additional Zilog Z80 CPU of that computer. It also had two extra registers. One of the additional registers was for accessing the added numerical keypad and other extra keys of that computer. This function was added to the Victoria merely because that proved to be the easiest place in the computer to add the necessary three extra output pins. The other extra register was for toggling between a 1 MHz and a 2 MHz system clock. At the higher speed, the Vic II's video output is merely displaying every second byte in the code as black highest bit pattern on the screen, suggesting use of the C128's 80 column mode at that speed via the 8563 VDC RGB chip. Rather unofficially, the two extra registers were also available in the C128-C64 mode, permitting some use of the extra keys, as well as double-speed no video execution of CPU-bound code such as intensive numerical calculations in self-made C64 programs. The extra registers were also one source of minor incompatibility between the C128-C64 mode and a real C64. A few older C64 programs inadvertently wrote into the 2 MHz toggle bit, which would do nothing at all on a real C64, but would result in a messed up display on a C128 in C64 mode.
The Vic E has the little known ability to create an additional set of colors by manipulating the registers in a specific way that puts the color signal out of phase with what other parts of the chip consider it to be in. Using the specific behavior of the Vic E's test bit, it is furthermore capable of producing a real interlace picture with a resolution of 320 times 400 highest mode and 160 times 400 multicolor mode. Topic: List of Vic 2 versions. Commodore made many modifications to the Vic 2 during its lifetime. Compute, S Gazette's first issue, in July 1983, reported that there had already been eight since the Commodore 64's release in mid-1982. PAL MOS Technology 6569 PAL -B, used in most PAL countries MOS Technology 6572 PAL -N, used in Southern South America only MOS Technology 6573 PAL -M, used in Brazil only MOS Technology 8565 HMOS2 version 4 C64E motherboards MOS Technology 8566 VIC2E C128 version MOS Technology 8569 VIC2E C128 version NTSC MOS Technology 6566 designed for SRAM, non-muxed address lines used in the Commodore Max machine MOS Technology 6567 original NMOS version MOS Technology 8562 HMOS2 version MOS Technology 8564 VIC-2 EC128 version notes in all C64 models VIC-2 is socketed for easy replacement, but it is important to notice that 6569, 6572, 6573, 6566 and 6567 use 12 volts and 5 volts when 8565 and 8562 use only 5 volts. Replacing old version with new version without motherboard modification destroys 8565 and 8562 if powered up in the oldest versions of C64 motherboards. Several revisions of 6569 exist, 6569R1 usually gold-plated, 6569R3, 6569R4 and 6569R5. The most common version of 8565 is 8565R2. Topic. See also Video display controller List of home computers by video hardware